everybody. Yay! You wish. Uh, <laughs> it never be. Welcome to the Dollhouse. We're really glad you're here. This is her last performance, so we want you to be as mean. Yay! Give it up for that. Yeah. So, yeah, we want you to be as mean as humanly possible, so she never, ever, ever comes back. So feel free to throw anything you have in your hand. As if I'd come back anyway. Yeah. <laughs> You'll find on your chair a little envelope. Please help the orphans. What we do here, flying in big name talent, putting them up in expensive Four Seasons Ooh. hotel suites all the time. <laughs> Very expensive, we're not non-profit. All the money that you leave us in these envelopes tonight goes to our new productions that are coming up as well. Perhaps so, you could wait until after the show before begging. <laughs> okay. You ready back there, Cal? Uh, certainly am. All right. Well, we're going to do it up now. It's time for the Lady Bunny. So let's give her a big round of applause. Lady Bunny! Introduction. <laughs> the next time I 
Then your funny line, I'll take one off of your fucking face. <laughs> anyway, I have been having a smashing time here in Boston. Why, well, I got in earlier this week and thought I would take a little walk around town. I got lost in a beautiful part of Boston called Fenway Loop. Perhaps you've heard of it? <laughs> Folks, the beauty of that spot brought me right down to my knees. And I stayed there for hours just... Taking it all in, really getting a mouthful, I mean an awful. Anyway, enough of that. There's something very important that I have to ask all of you. <laughs> due to health problems. Aww. Yeah, I've been having this horrible problem with my knees. And I went to the, even before I went to Fenway Loop, no, I uh, went to the doctor and he said, well, Bunny, what have you been doing differently? And I said, well, doctor, it could be getting fucked doggy style all the time. He said, well, Bunny, why don't you roll over on your back and get fucked like everyone else? I said, doctor, I would, but my dog has such bad breath. <laughs> Well, uh, in order to figure out what's really wrong with you, I need a blood sample, a stool, that's what doctors call shit, a stool sample, and a urine sample. I said, here, doctor, just take my underwear. Uh, then, uh, then, then I said, doctor, I fart all the time, and the only thing is my farts have absolutely no smell, and they make no noise whatsoever. I said, buddy, take these pills and come back in a week. I came back into that doctor's office furious, saying, Doctor, I hope you can explain yourself. I took these pills, and now my farts smell horrible. He said, Well, buddy, now that your sinuses have been cleared, we can get to work on your hearing. <laughs> Why, if you thought those were tacky, wait till you hear my X-rated salute to life in. Hit it! <laughs> Bore backstage asked me, Bunny, can I smell your pussy? And I said, Certainly not. And he said, Oh, well, it must be your feet. <laughs> What's the difference between a priest and acne? Acne doesn't come on your face until you're 13. <laughs> when you have a serious underbite. When you're eating pussy and it tastes like shit! How do you make a gay man fuck a girl? Just shit in her cunt. What does it taste like to go down on an 80-year-old lesbian? Depends. God make farts smell so that deaf people can enjoy them too. <laughs> so a hillbilly comes home and tells his father, Daddy, I found the perfect girl to marry, and she's a virgin. And his father said, Well, hell, son, if her own family won't fuck her, we sure won't. <laughs> a hillbilly mom know when her daughter has her first period? She can taste it on her son's cough. <laughs> Do you know the best part about the birth of Michael Jackson's son? <laughs> Honey, at least he'll have a steady boyfriend for the next 12 years. <laughs> Do you know why Michael Jackson decided to have a second son? I guess his seven-month-old is already losing his looks. <laughs> when is it bedtime at the Michael Jackson home? When the big hand touches the little hand. You know, I asked my mommy the other 
day, why does daddy put his pee pee in mommy's pussy? And she said, that's how mommy gets babies. And I said, hmm, well, why does daddy put his pee pee in mommy's mouth? And she said, that's how mommy gets jewelry. <laughs> Okay, one more. How do you make Martha Stewart scream twice? Fuck her in the ass and then wipe your dick on her curtains. Thank you. You know I'm going to sue the dollhouse. If I trip on these fucking pieces of paper, come on, let's see. I tell better jokes, they do. Well, I try, you know. Um, I did hear one that I thought was kind of cute. Can I share it with you just to kind of try it out? You be the judge. Okay, so a man is walking down the street and he hears a little girl say, Please spare some change for a fix. And he says, Oh my God, little girl, how long have you been into drugs? She said, Since I was four when I was raped. He said, oh my God, who raped you? I don't remember, I was drunk. <laughs> Thank you, good night. It's a keeper. It's a keeper? Yeah. Oh, I have a few other ones if you want me to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This, um, well, maybe I should move my stool over here since this is the only ones that wanted to hear more. <laughs> um, I just I didn't make any tacky shit joke about stool. <laughs> oh, I already did. <laughs> um, okay. An embalmer uh, runs into his bo boss's office and says, you know, I've been working on Mrs. Horowitz, and there's a piece of jumbo shrimp sticking out of her pussy. And the, uh, the senior embalmer runs in and says, that's not a piece of shrimp, that's her clit. He says, oh, well, it tasted like shrimp. <laughs> I think I'm getting back. I can't remember any of the other ones. What, what? Oh, well, that one's really tacky, but, so I'll tell it. <laughs> um, a little boy runs in to see his father and says, guess how old I am today, Daddy? His father says, you're 11. And so he skips into his grandma's room. Guess how old I am? Shut up! Guess how old I am today, Grandma? She takes her long, thin, spotted arm, unzips his fly, and fondles his genitals for a few minutes. She says, you're 11. He said, how could you tell, Grandma? She said, I heard your father. <laughs> okay, how about this one? The, uh, oh, God, these poor guys are coming in now. <laughs> at the experimental <laughs> section of the show. What were some of those other ones that were there really great? I blocked them out. You blocked them out? They were that bad? Okay, a man pulls over, he sees a little girl crying at the edge of a deserted cliff. He said, what's the matter, honey? And she points over, still crying, at the edge of the cliff where her parents lay mangled on the rocks beneath. Puts his hand on her shoulder and unzips his fly and said, I guess this just ain't your lucky day, is it? <laughs> God, did you give them some, what, which one? Um, the, keep an eye on the, the, the one the girl pointing at her parents, you know, when will I get that? What is oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> Uh-oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, oh, you know, I'm fine. No, uh, the, um, yeah. <laughs> no. God, I really can't remember how that one starts off. It's the thing about new material, it's hard to remember it. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, she runs up to her mom, points at her pussy, and says, When do I get one of those? And her mom says, When you grow up. She goes over to her father, says, Well, when do I get one of those? He says, As soon as your mom goes to work. <laughs> kind of dark. <laughs> Slightly dark. Okay. Uh, then the sailor comes home. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the sailor comes home, not very ladylike, is it, to blow snot out of your nose on the stage? I'm just allergic to great jokes, what did I say? Uh, the, uh, the, the sailor comes home after two or three years, and he goes straight to the poorhouse, and um, he sees your mom. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, goes straight to the whorehouse and says, she said, the man says, $50. He said, oh my God, I've only got 50 cents, because there anything you can do? So she giggles, and uh, says, go to room 23. 
And the door opens and it's a hideous, ugly, fat, grotesque, smelly pig of a woman in there. <laughs> and I say, hi, I'm Buddy. No. <laughs> no, I don't smell. <laughs> I'm old and fat, but I don't smell. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but he's got to go through with it because he's so horny. So he, um, she says, how do you want it? And she, he says, well, maybe with your head covered with a pillow and your legs wide open, there's crabs running in and out of her pussy. Oh, yeah. and he says, oh no, 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 no. Why don't you get on all fours? And her ass is in the air. There's shit all over her ass. <laughs> he says, this is too sick. I'm sorry. I can't do this. She said, there is one more thing we can try. Takes her eye out of the socket. <laughs> so he puts his cock in, starts pumping it violently, comes a minute later, and said, you know, I have to say that was fantastic. And uh, she said, well, when will you be in town again? He says, she, he says, another two or three years. She said, I'll keep an eye out for you. <laughs> Not worth the wait. Uh -huh. Okay, you know, I like a little give and take with mine. Now, you did give them some of that cider, didn't you? Because uh -huh. I, I wanted the cider to kind of loosen y'all up because I knew that my particular brand of humor, <laughs> but um, we, did you get some of the cider? We're ready, girl. Did you, are you ready? <laughs> oh, good. Did you get some of that cider? Uh -huh. Yeah. You didn't drink any of it, did you? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we, it was supposed to be like a mulled rum cider, and we ran out of the rum. <laughs> so they actually went and put rum uh, flavoring in it to try and trick you. It's kind of cheap and kind of cheesy, but I, but then I was afraid it wouldn't be strong enough, so luckily I had a couple bottles of poppers backstage, and we took um. those in, too. <laughs> That's okay, that extra little mm, bit of tang to it. Anyway. I think having booze around is a very good idea. My shows are any time. In fact, here's a little motto that I live my entire life by. You see, folks, I keep a little bottle beside my bed, and I take a little drink each time I raise my head. It opens up my eyes. possibly be wrong. <laughs> now, even the late great Sylvia Cindy, give her a hand. Because that bitch was a star. I said, never, ever, ever, ever. Pass my bar. Don't you be ashamed of drunks. Some of my best friends are. Hey, Lolly, because booze is the only answer. Why don't you have a little bit? 
to powder my nose. Don't worry, it doesn't take long to powder a button nose. <laughs> and for any of you smarty pants that might think that I have forgotten what song is next and that I have a set list back here and I'm going to look at it, you're wrong. I'm going to powder my nose. <laughs> right! <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> They're having a great time. Oh, it's time to in Boston. <laughs> Is there after hours in Boston? Club's closed early. Anyway. Um, I'll find the mic over to the mouth. <laughs> Now, uh, that's Miss Retard to you. Um, the, um, yeah, the next song I actually created especially for Bean Town, and I hope that you will agree that it is a gas. <laughs> And she's 38, where it's great to measure 38. Dear sir, she is a silent girl. Dear sir, I'm her. I don't use a knife, don't need no gun. My equipment is a lot more deadly. retarded old songs because well I mean I really can't impersonate anyone I've tried to you know, think of someone who I looked like and I know that Barbara Eden Sharon Stone all spring to mind <laughs> who said Shelley Winters <laughs> but actually a little girl came up to me in the airport and uh, said oh can I have your autograph and I said little girl where would you possibly know me from and she said Oh, I see you every week on the Drew Carey Show. You're Mimi, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm Mimi. Come here, honey. Let's play dress up. You be Jean Benet. <laughs> anyway, there, is, there are so many queens in this area that do incredible impersonations. I'm sure you're familiar with Jimmy James' act. How could you not be? The fucker's been doing the same shit for 15 years. <laughs> You know who I'm talking about, the one that does all the vocal impersonations? And then I guess his look that he does them in is kind of like Dallas's Charlene Tilton on chemotherapy. <laughs> no, you lose weight on chemotherapy. Oh. And then there's Musty Chiffon doing that dead-on impersonation of Bullwinkle. <laughs> and uh, another incredible impersonator in the area is uh, Uh, Sylvia Sidney's gone, but she's survived by her twin sister, Candy Kane. <laughs> Unfortunately, she's not nearly as funny as Sylvia. <laughs> Or 
I'm pretty. <laughs> and in New York, we have um, Joey Arias. Are you familiar with him? Uh, oh, God. He needs a new publicist. Uh, <laughs> he's the one that channels Billie Holiday, and you close your eyes, and you really do hear. Billy Holiday, of course you open him to see Fred Flintstone in drag, but I'm not here to criticize anybody. Um, anyway, I finally found someone that I could vocally impersonate, and um, <laughs> even though the review in the Bay Window said that I sounded like a cross between Shirley Bassey and B. Arthur. <laughs> Two of my favorites. What a great review. <laughs> um, I finally found someone that I could vocally impersonate. And uh, I was working with Elvira, who introduced this number in this way. You close your eyes and you hear Kate Bush. You open them and see Barbara Bush. Oh, hit it. <laughs> Well, you know what they say, what do you call a top in Boston? A tourist. <laughs> so, in this cold, wintry climb, uh -huh. I've resorted to calling the phone sex line. Does anyone call them? Oh, no. The ads are just in every paper. But nobody calls them. <laughs> Must be losing a lot of money, these businesses. Um, anyway, well, I like to get on them because you, the, the, you can get on the straight lines and as a girl, talk for free. So, Pepper gets on there and calls up just about every single night. And the guys are so horny, funny, you have to have a, some fun with them. I mean, you know, they're so horny, they don't care what you say. They're like, well, Pepper, what do you look like? I have long blonde hair. All three of them. <laughs> well, what are you, undaunted, they keep on. Well, what are you wearing? I'm wearing a yellow necklace. It matches my teeth. Both of them. They don't care. I, I, I've even told them. I, I've even met guys who I've given this description to. I've got long blonde hair, blue eyes, a curvy figure, nice long legs, and really big feet. 
<laughs> Sometimes they can sense that I'm not a real woman. <laughs> and they say, say they think I'm a transsexual. And they say, well, do you have a pussy? And I'm like, well, yeah. It's just that it's a little bit further back than most. And, well, to be honest with you, it is kind of a shitty model. But I mean, trust me, the size of the clitoris really makes up for it. <laughs> My favorite is the ones that want to be dominated, and they call it, Mistress Pepper, I await your command. And I'm like, hang up, never to phone again. <laughs> that always gets up. But um, I did, I met one guy from there the other night, a Puerto Rican guy. Hey, I like my whoppers with cheese. I don't know about you. I see you do as well. Uh, anyway, met this Puerto Rican guy. My message had said that I love to suck cock. Hey, motherfuckers, proud of it. And um, one other cocksucker out there. Um, and. He said, not only are you going to suck my cock, but I'm going to fuck your throat. And while I'm doing it, I'm going to call you a cum burping slut. <laughs> to which I replied, <laughs> so we've met. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was lots of fun. But seriously, I have been having lots of man problems. Yeah, mainly that I am one. No. <laughs> seriously, folks. to find a guy that really blows your mind and you just dig everything he does like when he gives you that great big special hug and that heavy kiss girls you know the kind the kind that's in the wrong place at the wrong time and yet it really turned you on. Well, I had a guy like that. Honey, the man was so fine, even the pimples on his back looked good to me. As I busted him every morning for him with my teeth. You've heard the expression, that man is so fine I drink his bath water. Uh-uh. I would drink this fool's mama's bath water to pay homage to the pussy he popped out of. <laughs> anyway, then that time came when we had an argument. And like all, and I mean all us girls, I said some pretty dumb things like, get lost. I don't want to see you anymore. It's too big for me, honey. But he was cool. He just stood there looking so hurt and he said, Well, big bad bud, if that's the way you want it. And he split. And I just stood there looking dumb and let that big old rascal walk right out of my life. I told myself I wasn't going to sweat. Oh, but I did. I've been as evil as a wet hen ever since. And my friends, well, my friend, she knew. I know she knew. Anyway, then one evening, I was standing at a bus stop when I heard a voice behind me say, Hi, buddy. Oh, I just fell all apart inside because I hadn't heard that voice in such a long time. I turned around. trying to maintain myself. He asked me if I had a few minutes. I really wanted to tell him I had a lifetime, but I couldn't blow a cool. We stopped at a cozy little place like the Waltham Tavern. Where I guess, oh, you know it? Where I guess the shock of seeing him again made me order a martini. Because that's something I've never done before. <laughs> They coughed to lean on. Hell, the music was soft and the lights were low. Could you dim that one about five years, honey? And that drink just started going to my head. He hadn't said anything about us, so I knew it was my move. 
and folks it had to be now. I had to get my nerve building. I couldn't let it go. Not this time. Not this time. So I took his hand, looked him straight into his good eye, and on that faithful night at the wall for the tavern, here at the Dollhouse Theater, the next portion of A Taste of Bunny, in which Bunny returns to her childhood home of Chattanooga, Tennessee, masquerading as the prepubescent girl that she never was, in no way reflects the high moral standards normally maintained in our productions. Yet given the volatile and usually inebriated nature of this performer, we felt it best to humor her. And now, on with the, um, show. Though the show is far from over, while changing into a new costume, please show your applause to some of the wonderful help that has made this show possible.
treatment on this, <laughs> this little outfit. You know, I am from Chattanooga, Tennessee, folks, and just to give you uh, Yankees, I mean uh, Northerners, some uh, taste of what it was like growing up in the South, I was trying to think, well, what would I have been doing on a Sunday night in Chattanooga, Tennessee? And then I remember that I had a cute country set that went with this next number. <laughs> that was supposed to be up for the last number. Oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> no, 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 I said a cute country set. <laughs> and we'd all, every Sunday night, we'd all gather around Grandma's old pot-bellied stuff. Oh, we'd all gather around Grandma's old pot-bellied stove, and we'd ask... <laughs> Anybody out there? 
you see me too soon? I'm a little bit worried about it. I've heard about these Boston lesbians. I thought that I led pretty much the ideal childhood, but I realized later on through therapy, which is helping out a great deal, that perhaps it wasn't quite so idyllic a childhood as I had thought. And uh, it was difficult for me to get into therapy, but everyone I know insisted. <laughs> you can imagine that. <laughs> and, um, it was just so hard to get into it because of the different language they speak. I mean, my therapist started off, she said, well, now tell me something, John. I hate it when she calls me that. <laughs> Do you ever hear voices? And I was like, is this a trick question? I think I just heard you if you asked me if you ever hear voices. But um, <laughs> it's so, it was so hard for her to get into my sense of humor, as you, it's, it's difficult for you to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> when she asked me, um, you know, how was your last visit with your parents? I said, oh, it's the usual. Not much conversation, but lots of hot sex. <laughs> I wish I had been kidding. <laughs> anyway, the main thing that I have gotten from the therapy is an eviction notice. That shit's expensive. No. <laughs> that I've got, which is why I'm here in Boston. <laughs> We're sick of being in New York. <laughs> uh, is there a bitter sound technician? <laughs> Chortling in her dingy booth. <laughs> or was that just a special K and two's babble? <laughs> when I heard that there was a good buzz about the dollhouse theater, I didn't know that that meant all the employees were on drugs. Except for me, of course. <laughs> anyway, what fascinating tale was I telling? Okay. What my therapist really made me realize, you see, I had a very stern and critical father who you know, always made me feel inadequate by asking me to do things that were impossible. I mean, how is an eight-year-old supposed to take a 10-inch cock up their ass every night? <laughs> My therapist has just, in her sane way, you know, made me realize that it's physically impossible for an eight-year-old to take a 10-inch cock more than once every two or three weeks. <laughs> Your father had a 10-inch cock? No, our dog did. Oh, <laughs> oh, they're killing him. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to be killing me in a minute. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, yeah. I couldn't do a section of country songs uh, in the show without paying homage to one of my favorite country artists, Miss Bobby Gentry. See, she's a big hit here in Boston. You remember her, Ode to Billy Joe. And she also recorded this song, which I had used as my theme song for many years. And then, uh, inbred white trash whore with jacked out red hair and close set eyes, Reba McIntyre <laughs> decided that she would come along and steal the song. Well, I want to put the record straight that when I do it is an homage to Bobby Gentry and not that inbred Reba McIntyre whore. And for stealing the song from me, you remember that plane crash in which all of Reba's band was tragically killed? <laughs> you don't fuck with me, Rita! <laughs> Yeah. 
was shaggy and she looked at me and drew a ragged breath. <gasps> Your paws run off and I'm real sick and the baby's gonna starve to death. She handed me a heart shaped locket that said to thine own self be true. And I shivered as I watched a roach crawl across the toe of my high heel shoe. It sounded like somebody else that was talking asking mama what do I do? Just be nice to the gentleman fancy and they'll be nice to you. Here's your one chance fancy.
Exactly. <laughs> but you know, I do want to set the record straight. I actually am a very well brought up religious Southern Belle, and I hate to perform dirty material. It's just that you guys seem to like it. <laughs> I'm glad that my sainted mother is not here in Boston to hear me talk ugly like that. Thank God that bitch is in jail, honey. <laughs> well, she's a sweet woman, it's just that that crack cocaine sets her off. <laughs> kind of like our sound technician. Can we have a hand for Akira? No, 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 I don't mean applaud. I mean a hand. Help her, she sucks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can go ahead and start that next tape, and when you just don't. <laughs> I want to leave you with this message because it's not performing, it's not glittering gowns, it's not dirty jokes or any of that. It makes me tick. It's my personal relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to tell you about it.